<laughs> Hi guys, my name is Rory, and if you're watching this, then that means your cat was just diagnosed with diabetes, or you have some weird fetishes that you like to watch on YouTube, and I'd rather not know about it or check your search history. Um, I made this video because when my little guy Valentino got diabetes, um, most of the videos I checked out were uh, confusing or not very warm uh, or just downright sad. It's sometimes helpful, but just doom and gloom. And I want to tell you that uh, it's a very manageable disease uh, for you and your cat that might even bring you guys even closer together. Um, and I tell you, there will be some lifestyle changes, but nothing major, not at all. And if you have a dog that was diagnosed with diabetes, um, maybe some of this stuff helps. I, I, I can't speak to dogs. Well, I, I, no, one, no one can really speak to dogs, but I, I can't um, uh, you know, uh, give you advice on that. I would ask your vet. And once again, I am not a doctor in any way, shape or form. Not at all. So if you need a second opinion or really a first opinion, go ahead and consult your vet. Um, but uh, uh, I'm going to share you, with you some things, tips and tricks that work for us. Okay. It's okay. So your cat has diabetes. I do not know who this cat is, but if you know who his agent is, let me know. I probably owe him some royalties for using his likeness. Here's my little guy. What are you looking at? Look at him. This is Valentino. Cutie. Look at that. He always knew where the camera was. What a Muppet. Look at those feet. Just a sweetheart. So the first day after getting the diagnosis, my, get, uh, my vet gave me a prescription for insulin and a box of syringes and sent me on my way. Now, I'm no doctor, is what I told him. I'm no doctor. So what am I supposed to do? Um, I will say the vet will show you how to administer the shot. But this was at the very start of COVID. Valentino was diagnosed in March of 2020. And we weren't allowed inside the vet office. So ask them to show you if you can. I, I think it's fine now. You can always watch the videos too. Those videos are fine. They just don't have a lot of warmth to them, but uh, they will help. But it doesn't really beat seeing the real thing. So ask your vet if you can uh, if you can do that. And also, when I heard injections, I was thinking shots into the vein twice a day. I'll never be able to do that. And, uh, you know, you may already know this, but I didn't. And it's not, it's not into the skin. It's actually under the fur. Very easy peasy, right? Look how, look how much fun that cat is having. Oh, it's a, a day at the spa, I tell you. Uh, this chart is very handy. This shows, uh, oh, right. I had a you're so vain joke in here. It, it worked in my head. I don't know where I was going for it. Anyway, this is good. Uh, these are good places to uh, shoot them up. Uh, you want a place in their body where they have a lot of uh, fur, a lot of fluff where you can get a good handful of it and make a little uh, fur pocket, like a little like a little tent. And that's where the needle will go into. And you'll feel it kind of go through the fur. And it doesn't hurt them at all, all right? Well, the best, one of the best places is the fur right behind their, uh, their neck. And they do say to um, rotate where you put the shot so they don't have a sore there. You can do that every, you know, three days. And it doesn't mean huge uh, amounts of uh, like a huge uh, difference, just maybe an inch, a half an inch as you go around it. Um, and try to associate the shot with some food. I, you know, I don't work for Boar's Head, uh, but they do like deli meats is a fun little treat that they can associate with it. I, I'm not adverse to working for Boar's Head. But if anyone from Boar's Head is watching, um, if we can do some kind of crossover, I, I'm down. But, uh, you know, obviously don't give them a honey turkey, but roast beef or uh, uh, like a regular turkey is good. But just distract them with food. That's how I take my Lipitor. And once again, it doesn't hurt them, right? You'll feel the, the needle puncture the fur, but it doesn't hurt. Um, if you do pierce their skin, which you won't, it's fine. If you pierce yourself, you happen to prick yourself. I did it many, many times the first few weeks. You'll be fine. A little blood, but that's it. Um, Dispose of the needles in the handy dandy container that your vet gives you. At first, I was told to drop the full empty containers off at the vet, but then they said I can just throw them out with the regular trash. Uh, timing is everything, they say. So, you know, you want to give them two shots a day every 12 hours, and this is the part where you scream and think your social life is over, and you can never, ever go out again, and you have to become a monk. Guess what? You're right. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Just kidding, of course. This, too, is fine. You know, if you work a nine-to-five job, then once in the morning, once at night is the ideal plan, you know, 9 a.m., 9 p.m. If you're like me and you work odd jobs at different times, this can be tricky, but not impossible. You can always air an hour on either side. So, like, if you do it at 9 a.m., you can do the next one between 8 and 10 p.m. If it's later than that, uh, just skip it. You know, it's fine to miss a day or even two, but try not to do it that often. But it's fine to skip it. You know, it's better to give too little than too much during a 24-hour period. So don't worry about being on time. Uh, all the time. 
because too much could make their levels go way low, which could make them slip into a coma, and we don't want that, whereas too little doesn't affect them in the immediate. If you are there and you think you've given them too much, watch for the signs. If they appear lethargic, if they're shaking, even convulsions, they need sugar. And now you're like, my cat is always lethargic. That's 90% of cats' personality. But look out for the other uh, symptoms as well. The easiest way to get uh, sugar into their bloodstream is to rub some uh, pure maple syrup on their gums. Not the cheap stuff, the expensive stuff, of course, right? But that does the trick. Just rub a little on their gums, and they should be just fine. Uh, there are several services that will uh, come to your house and give the shot for your cat if you are unable. Uh, uh, your vet can help you find that. Sometimes the vet techs even make house calls and will do it. Services you know, usually about 20 bucks a pop. And they're great when you go on vacation or you're out of town for an extended period of time. Uh, getting and training a friend or neighbor is also a great idea. You, you know, friends, you can friend me here. If I'm close, I will do it. And you want to do it on an elevated surface, like a countertop or a table or, or this cliff. Uh, this cliff is nice. Um, not on the floor where, you know, if you have their food on the floor, try to move it up to the, the counter. Uh, you want to be able to control them. And it's hard to, you know, get down on your knees and give a shot. So just make sure uh, they're on an elevated sur surface. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm with you, Garfield. No one likes diets. And cats get very set in their ways when it comes to food. As am I. If I could live off chicken wings and angel hair pasta, I would, but my doctor says I can't. He gets very angry. Anyway, that's me. The main enemy of diabetes is carbohydrates, which sucked for Valentino because he loved gravy. Oh, man, you give him a fancy feast gravy, he'd swallow it one gulp. But it's uh, very, high, very high in carbs. So if your cat already eats pâtés, you are ahead of the game. Also, grains suck. Get grain-free food. Grain-free, low-carb, high-protein is the best diet. Some great brands of wet food are Tiki Cat. Our seafood selections are excellent. Fancy Feast Classic Pate, if you're, you know, something a little cheaper, make sure it's the pate and not the gravies. Um, the flaked and chunky are also okay, but don't use, don't use the Florentines. Don't do anything with uh, cheese, creams, gravies, things like that. And we Ruba has some nice uh, low grain uh, quality cat food. And, you know, trial and error, see what they like. There's, there's tons and tons of cat food every day. More and more comes out. For dry foods, uh, I recommend Dr. Elsie's. I don't think you can get better than Dr. Elsie's. It is um, a wonderful stuff, and cats love it. And Crave is also a good alternative for uh, low protein, or actually uh, uh, low protein, low grain. I want the protein. So low grain, uh, low carb, high protein. Crave. I'm not averse to working with you either, Crave, if I can get your uh, ingredients right. Anyway, boar's head is another uh, wonderful treat. Uh, again, I don't <clears throat> work for them yet. Uh, but, you know, don't get the honey turkey, regular turkey, and some roast beef in moderation is good. Cats can also eat baby food. Baby food is fine. And tuna. What cat doesn't like tuna? But make sure it's in water and not oil. Water and not oil. Sorry, Charlie, no oil. Um, if you're out and it's a new food or you're in a city and you, you can't get your regular stuff, you can use a handy dandy um, cat food calculator. Um, I'll let you read this. I'll keep it on the screen here. Basically, you um, calculate um, the fat, the fiber, the moisture, protein, and and and, um, and if ash is listed, you can list. You can use ash too. Uh, you you count that up. You subtract it by one hundred, and whatever is left over is uh, how many carbs are in there. For example, if you know this is a pretty good one, so if you find this. Oh, gosh, don't make me do the math. 82, 92, anything It's like 1% or something. So we're looking for you know, 5 6% or lower for your food. So if you're out on the go, just add all this up. And uh, if, like I said, if it's like 5 or 6% or lower, you're good to go on that food. Uh, the insulin I was prescribed is called Lantus. It comes in a pen, easy to use, easy to store. And as far as storage, you have to keep your insulin in the fridge, but don't keep it. And that little shelf in the door, see there where the mayonnaise is? Don't keep it there. Keep it in either in the back or where the vegetables go uh, because you're going to be opening that fridge all day and the, um, the lances will change temperature rapidly. So you want to keep it in a place where it's not affected if you open the door. All right, monitoring. Some people uh, like to do home tests every day, you know, where they prick their cat's ear and check their blood. I didn't do that because uh, gross. And... Uh, you know, two shots a day already. I want him to live his life, and I don't want him to fear, you know, 
getting the getting the uh, trick in the ear. But if that works for you, you can do it. What I did was uh, I did uh, something called the uh, Libra Freestyle. They shave a little patch on his neck or the side, and they put this little monitor on there, and then they give you a scanner, and you can scan him throughout the day, and it'll give you his um, his glucose and blood sugar. It's it, it again. This doesn't hurt them either. Um, I would put it on the back of their neck on the side like that. It's real easy for them to scratch it off unless um, your cats like to wear outfits, which sometimes uh, Valentino would. Right. Support groups, guys. Well, support groups. They're good for everything, right? And support groups for diabetic cats, especially on social media, are good and bad. You know, you can join these groups if you have questions about food or insulin, cat behavior, you know, if you need a cat sitter, just go online, go on Facebook, Instagram, find the cat places, um, cat groups near you that deal with this so you can build a little community. It's very nice. But, you know, uh, just like with any support group, you can get addicted to it. There are some people that uh, go a little too far, a little too far with it, you know, and they're, you know, they, they want to test their cat's glucose every hour on the hour. Uh, you know, they, they wake up and they make charts every day and they make this about your life and they can make you feel bad like you're a bad cat parent. Uh, if you don't obsess like this, but really there's only so much you can do in 24 hours and, and you just can't make this your life, you know? Um, so don't get sucked in. Plus they call, you know, they call them like sugar babies. Oh, my little sugar babies. How's your sugar baby today? You know, I don't know. I don't care what your sugar babies. Um, so this is just some basic, uh, basic information just to get you started. Uh, I hope it helps. I do want to say that uh, little Valentino passed away in March of uh, 2022 it was not diabetes related in fact he was going into remission we were down to one shot so uh, everything that we did in this video worked for us uh he had cancer but he was a strong little guy and i will miss him forever and i will say that um his shelter name was lionel but he's so not a lionel he's a valentino right uh recently i adopted another little guy and in honor of valentino i named him lionel so this is lionel right here and uh he's a he's a good kid too uh he's one year old and uh yeah here he is say hi lionel all right lionel and i are gonna go split a turkey sandwich so we hope you uh uh, enjoy this video. If I got something wrong or you have a question or a comment or, or need to know any more information, uh, leave me a comment. Yeah. Did you write that part? All right. Bye. Can you hit, can you hit the stop? All right. Lionel, no mayonnaise on that sandwich. Come on, man. <laughs>